everyone. My name is Deanna, and I'm going to show you the free pattern on CKC's website. The pattern is called the Coffee Break. To get to this free pattern, you need to go to ckcpatterns.com and go on their blog. Over in this left-hand corner of the screen, you can type in Coffee Break and search. The pattern will now come up. If you select the read more option, more you can read all about the pattern and the different options that it has. To download it, you simply follow this link. The pattern opens in Dropbox. You can either click over here on download, directly download it, or save it to your Dropbox. I'm going to directly download it. Adobe is the best program to use when printing your patterns. It will ensure that everything prints out correctly, but I will also show you how. More into, you can either save the file or open with Adobe, and I'm gonna go ahead and open it. Now the pattern has loaded. This is going to tell you all about the pattern the materials you need, the fabric requirements, the conversion charts, the size chart and which measurements are best for making this skirt, the finished measurement length, working with knits, cutting your fabric for a low yoga waistband, high yoga waistband, waistband casing for the elastic and elastic. I'll also tell you exactly how to um, draft for the waist. So it says here, note this pattern is drafted for the largest waist size of each size. If your waist is on the smaller size of your size, subtract one inch from your waist measurement and use that as the width for your waistband and elastic, elastic you cut above. This tells you, print saver, what pages you need to print for the pattern to the one that you're using. So if you're just doing the skirt, the got it, if you're choosing not to do that, or the pocket. How to print, taping the pattern pages, and cutting out the pockets. Here's a layout of all the pattern pieces. Next, it goes into the instructions of the pattern. Be sure to read these through carefully and make for sure you understand all the steps. If you come across something that you're not sure what it is, please reach out to the group and ask and make sure and use the hashtag CKCHelp and someone will be happy to help you understand exactly what you're reading. Finally, you have the pattern itself. Now you'll notice that on this pattern has every size, up to a 3X. For instance, if you are an extra, extra small, this would waste a good amount of paper, but also a good amount of ink. So the best thing to do is to come over here to the side, And if you hover over this little stack of papers, that's what it kind of looks like, it says layers. Open that up and right here, coffee break. Now if you, if you need to print the extra extra small, the best thing to do is to unclick these sizes. That way, you just have the size that you need and you're not printing all this excess and wasting ink. You can do this for any size that you would need. I print the extra large for my size. Make for sure, right here it says, keep this layer checked. Make sure you do that. Next, we're going to hit the print icon. Now a box comes up and you wanna make for sure everything is correct. We want the custom scale to be 100% and auto portrait landscape on. Please make for sure this is done. You do not want to have any of these others clicked or else your pattern will come out the 
wrong size. You want to click, you want to print the pattern pieces that correspond with what you're making. I'm going to go ahead and print the entire pattern, which is page 13 to 32. And then just hit print. Let's talk about the fabric. I'm going to be making two skirts and showing you two different ways to do this pattern. One with the yoga waistband and one with the elastic waistband. I'm also going to be showing you how to do the goddess and how to do the slit in the skirt. So, the first skirt I'm going to make is out of rayon spandex. This fabric is so light and has a great drape. It also has a great stretch horizontally. I am, however, going to use the elastic for this one because rayon spandex tends to stretch out a little bit, especially if you used it for waistband. So I'm going to use the elastic in this one, which makes it to where I'll be able to, it will stay up without any problems. The next fabric that I'm going to use is a single brushed poly. I love this print. It's so, so pretty. It's like a... Um, navy coral and a baby blue print. Single brush poly is really interesting fabric. It's brushed on one side and super super silky on the other side. It's very soft. It's great nice and cool against your skin and um, it's also airy. It's a little bit heavier but it still should be okay. I've made one before out of a single brush poly with the yoga waistband and it's held up perfectly. So now that we have our fabrics picked out, let's talk about our tools. So there are several different ways to put a pattern together. You could use glue, you could use tape, you could use staples, which I don't know that I would recommend, but if you really didn't have any other option, you could do that. So the two options here, scotch tape, it's a little bit small, but it will work. Good old packing tape. This is what I use. I love this. It ha covers a good surface area and it just keeps the pattern held up and held together for a really long time. You know there's a lot of people who like to use a glue stick and I've just never found that to work for me. Once I found what really worked, it wasn't worth the fight. And I just kept on using this. I can get a big old pack of it at Costco. It saves a lot of money. Okay, also, scissors. So I'm new to the rotary cutter. I haven't used it for very long. I like it. I'm not comfortable 100% with it yet. So I still choose to use my scissors, but I do like it for straight edges. It is really nice for that. And I do have this nice mat I got as well, which is great. So I have two scissors here. <laughs> um, I've had them for a long time. These ones cut my paper. These ones cut my fabric. The two don't mix. You never want to cut your paper pattern with the same scissors that you're going to cut your fabric. It will give it notches and grossness and it will make it to where you will struggle really bad to cut your fabric. So if at all possible, try to have different scissors for your paper and your fabric. And if you look on the internet, you'll see many memes about how some people in other people's families <laughs> have picked up the fabric scissors to cut paper and how it's really not a good idea. Okay, so let's look at our pattern. So your pattern is going to print out on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. This first piece that printed out for me, which actually is the last piece because mine prints out in reverse, is the pocket. I'm going to go ahead and cut this out just so that I have it out of my way. You'll notice when you're looking at your piece that there is a grain line measurement, a top and a bottom measurement. You want to make for sure when you actually cut out your pocket for your skirt that you keep those in mind, which is the top and which is the bottom, because it really does make sense. You really don't want your pocket to hang like this if you accidentally put the bottom on the top because then it's not going to hang correctly. You want your pocket to go in, not up. Okay. So, on your pattern, there is a line right here. What you're gonna to wanna to do is match up these lines. 
Once they're matched up, you will want to use whatever method you're going to use to tape them together. I like to use my pattern weights um, when I put my pattern piece together and when I actually cut out because it helps keep my paper nice and stable. I just picked up these pattern weights at a local craft store. There's lots of options out there on the internet and um, in different shops and things. And um, So there's many options if you need them for good pattern weights. Before I got these, I used cans. So to each their own. Okay, so now we have our grotted piece taped together. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that out real fast. This gotted piece is cut on the fold. What is a gotted? A gotted is like an extra triangle, just like it looks like. Added This one specifically is added to the back of this pattern. Helps give a little bit more fullness and it really like can make a difference in the look of the pattern itself. Now, when we were going through the pattern instructions, and you should have gone that over that already, um, it stated that there was a petite, an average, and a tall skirt length. I am short, so I am going to cut out the petite length. You should cut out whatever length works for you. The measurements on the pattern are listed there, and it says clearly what you will need for if you need, it's, it's measured there in the average length, so if you need if you're shorter than what it calls for, then you need the petite length. If you're taller, you need the tall length. There we have it, all cut out. I'm gonna set this over by my Okay, so now for the skirt. The front, you'll notice on the skirt pattern, and I'll show you, that there are letters here, here, and here. And on each page, there's letters. You wanna make for sure and line up your letters and your lines. So what I'm gonna do now is just kind of lay out as many pattern pieces as will fit in this general area and then get to matching them up. There's red markings on these patterns that show you which one is the pocket, which one, which line for the split in the skirt, and where to do, um, if you want a high split or low split, and also where to put the gotted. Okay, now we're going to match these up. This is when your pattern weights are going to come in handy. So we're going to make for sure our A's and B's match up as well as the lines. I use one of my weights there. Then I'm going to make for sure my cross section matches up with my C's, A's, B's, E's, D's, G's, F's. <laughs> All my pattern pieces line up. So while I'm doing that, you do yours. Okay, so you got your pattern all taped together and cut out, and now it looks like this. And this piece is your front and your back. Now for the fabric, most knit fabrics at least 60 wide. So you're just gonna fold it over in half for this pattern. You've purchased enough to make it work so you don't have to fussy cut or anything like that. Um, you're just simply going to fold it in half. I'm doing right sides together for this. Um, single brush poly because the brush sides will kind of stick to each other a little bit better than the silky sides kind of um, move around on me when I'm trying to cut. 
So you can do it one of two ways. You can put it right side up or right side down. It really doesn't matter because it's being cut on the fold, so it's the same either way. But for the purpose of this video, I'll go ahead and show you right side up. So you're just gonna put your um, pattern, it says here, on the fold. So this straight edge goes on your fold. Just make for sure all your edges are inside the fabric. I'm going to use my pattern weights. Cut out my pattern using the correct scissors. Now I'm gonna do the pockets and the goddet for this pattern. So I'm gonna make for sure before I lift my pattern piece up that I mark those spots. And you'll notice as you're cutting that you're gonna have some excess off to the side. The good thing about that is that you'll be able to use that for your goddet and for your pockets. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my clip. And I'm just gonna mark with my clips on here. So the goddet is on the fold. And the pockets. And so now we're ready to cut another one. You're only doing one got it, so make for sure you don't mark it twice and then do two. I guess you could technically do one in the front if you wanted. Okay, so now before I unfold this part of my fabric, I am gonna go ahead and cut out my pockets. You're gonna need four of these pockets. There's a grain line measurement, so you wanna make for sure you're on grain. Which if you don't know what on grain means, basically you're gonna measure from the top of the arrow and the bottom of the arrow to the salvage. My piece is on grid. So now I'm going to cut around it. And I'm going to use my rotary cutter for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and mark with the clip the top because I don't want to forget which is the top and which is the bottom. I'm not quite great at the rotary cutter yet, as you can tell. Need a bit more practice. So here's one set of pockets. I'll go ahead and set that off to the side and cut one more set.
I'm gonna go ahead and finish up cutting the back piece, or the front piece, I guess, and I'll come back and show you how we cut out the waistband. Okay, so now we're gonna um, cut out the goddess. So it says to place it on the fold and you only need to cut one. got it already. So all our pattern pieces are cut out and now we need to cut out our waistband. The measurements in the pattern say to cut the yoga waistband, which I'm going to do the high yoga waistband on this one. <clears throat> We're going to cut it 8 for my size, 8 by 38. So I'm going to take my piece here, just kind of lay it out on my mat, line it up with the edge so I know it's somewhat straight. i try to get a straight line here so we can start somewhere. So we have a straight line, and again, I think I'm gonna have to cut because I don't know if it's me or <laughs> the uh, rotary cutter. It's probably me because I'm not super experienced with it. Okay. So. What I'm going to do is measure eight inches. <clears throat> and cut. Fold nineteen and a quarter. Okay. There we have it. So our pattern for this one is all cut out and now it's time to get to sewing. I'll meet you at the table. Okay, so this first version with the Rayon spandex, I'm gonna sew completely on my sewing machine. Now, if you have a serger, I'll show you, stay tuned, how to sew the skirt completely on your serger. It can be done on either machine and it is knit, so it doesn't have to be finished. It's not gonna unravel. And I'll show you which stitches are best for knit fabric. The stitch you want to use for sewing with knits, first of all, you want to make for sure, if you have a machine that's like this, that your fabric is changed. This one is a light, so I'm going to use stretch light. You have a 75 needle, a foot. I'm going to up my stitch length, but I'm going to do this lightning bolt stitch right here. And it ups it to 2.5, so that's perfect. So that's what I want to use for when sewing with knits. You could use a zigzag stitch if you 
<clears throat> really wanted to, but this one in particular is really wide and it kind of skips in between and what's going to happen is, is if you stretch it, it's going to pop. The best one to use, if your machine has it, is this lightning bolt stitch and most machines nowadays have that stitch. Okay, so I have my machine threaded and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew my elastic together. Um, I didn't have a long piece so I'm just going to sew the edges of this one. It's perfectly okay if you don't have a long piece. You can just have edges to work with. Okay. This will show you really well what the lightning bolt stitch looks like. Next, I'm going to sew my waistband piece together. This skirt is super simple and comes together rather quickly. So as you can see, this, this stitch has a little bit of a stretch to it, which is great because it helps to ensure that it's not going to pop on you when you go. And it doesn't, um, it's nice and tight too, so it's not going to come undone. Okay, set that aside. Now I'm going to sew my side seams together. Now this fabric isn't particularly slippery, but if you're new to sewing, it's probably good to go ahead and pin your seams. You can either use straight pins like this, or you could use clips like this. I prefer clips. Now I did decide to do the small slit on this skirt, so I marked it here, and I'm going to sew to that point, and then we will, I'll show you what we do next. As you're sewing, you should always use one hand to kind of guide the fabric and the other hand to hold it as it goes. And you can stop once you get this clip a little close and pull it out. When I get to this clip, I'm going to make sure and backstitch a couple of times. Now I'm going to switch my machine out of the lightning bolt stitch and into a long straight stitch. want to make for sure it's between 5 and 6 because this stitch is going to come out. Okay, 
So now what you're going to do is open this up and sort of hand crease this down. You see where it's backstitched here? That's gonna be your place where to mark, and I'm gonna mark it with a pin. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this with a pin. And you're going to sew this down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it, and I'm gonna sew up one side, across the top, and then down the other side. And I'm gonna put it back on the lightning bolt stitch because I don't want this to come out. Okay, here we go. Stay as close to that edge as you can, but also make for sure you catch it. Once I get to the pin, I'm going to pull it out, stop, twist, So across both seams, stop, twist, and back down the other side. Okay, now what we're gonna do, this is gonna create our slit. So I'm gonna come up here and undo this top little guy. And pull my string and away it comes. And there you have it, your split is completely done. You have a really nice split there. Okay, so the next part of this pattern is to put the elastic casing inside the waistband. So I'm going to do that now. They should be, they should, they are the same size, so it's just a matter of the same width, I guess I should say. Getting this folded over and sticking this inside. There's two ways you can do this. Again, you can pin it in place. You could put it in here and baste it so that you're not catching that elastic or you can just pin it and sew it on, whatever you feel the most comfortable doing. And also depending on your fabric too. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this one. Just wanna make sure to catch both the front and the back.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and baste this because I think it's gonna go on the best. And I want to make for sure that I don't catch the sewing machine. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back to the longest stitch length, straight stitch with the longest stitch length. Okay, so now we have this basted and I'm going to find the front, the back, and the two sides. The back is going to be that seam, so it's easy then to kind of figure out what the sides are going to be. And we're going to do the same on the skirt. The sides are already figured out for us, and we're just going to find the front and back by matching the side seams. And you could have done this um, while it was folded on the pattern piece and just marked your center. Or you could do it now. Okay. Now all I'm gonna do is got lost. <laughs> Go ahead and clip it to my pattern piece. Now there should be a difference between the pattern, between the skirt and the waistband. That's what you want. Want a little bit of room in there. And what you're gonna do is stretch it as you go. So you're gonna stretch, stretch your waistband as you go so that it fits onto the skirt. Okay, so now our waistband is completely sewn on. And we have the elastic already in it, so that part's done. Now all I have to do is the hem. And you've already done your side piece, so or your split. So now all I have to do is start at one split and go around. I'm gonna leave it on the um, lightning bolt stitch, and I'm just gonna fold it up once. You could just leave this completely unhemmed. It's up to you. Um, it is knit, so it would not ravel. There you have it, your pattern is all done. Stay tuned as we make the other pattern with the got it and the pockets and the high yoga hem. I'll go ahead and show you what this one looks like. <laughs> 